<clears throat> I remember I'm watching. Not, I'm not saying I I I think people we should stop with the whole anti-hero trend. I actually I love it. Mm-hmm. I'm just like curious. That, like, you know, is it is it just becoming like an exhausted trend at this point that like no. can't be? I don't think I don't so. It, and, and is are we losing something by not having the like, you know, like the Aragorn? Because to me, that's like a perfect example of like a hero character who's like somewhat relatable, realistic in in the confines of that world, and also like the perfect example of like what a I don't know what I would define like a a hero or like a man, you know, someone someone to sort of like strive towards. Mm. Like I use an example in the the question I asked, like Game of Thrones versus Lord of the Rings. <laughs> you know, Game of Thrones is like morally ambiguous, ambiguous characters who are like maybe more relatable because they're so flawed. And then Game of Thrones is like, no, there's like no one's rooting for the orcs mm-hmm. in, in Lord, Lord of the Rings. Rings yeah. mm-hmm. What did I say? Game, Game of Thrones. Thrones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Game of Thrones, morally ambiguous. You could be rooting for either side or whatever, or several sides. I was rooting for the orcs in Game of Thrones. <laughs> 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 um, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I do. Yeah. I remember watching, I think it was one of the CNN series of like, you know, they did each decade, like the 1990s, the 2000s, whatever. I was rooting for Sauron. <laughs> and they did a, an episode on TV. In the, I think it was in the 2000s. And they talk about the onset of the antihero or the morally gray protagonist. <coughs> and they really like said, you know, HBO was the one that ushered in a whole new... Sopranos. Mm-hmm. A whole new uh, era of what a protagonist is, especially within TV. They changed They changed everything. They changed what TV is because they're the ones that first started with changing the form into longer form stuff, making TV more like movies. And, and not only just in length, but in like quality of production and budget and all that. And then also like the depth of story. It was like, you know, their characters were much more dark and ambiguous and morally gray and then it it just kind of set the sopranos was really one of the first ones and there was like nurse jackie um oz there's a bunch of examples yeah. of and then of dexter and De- then breaking yeah. bad became like the probably the most famous so there's this whole era and that's a, a, a wait with dexter well, breaking bad yeah, not different HBO, networks but but point is hbo had a whole slew of mm-hmm. them once one network gets successful yeah. the rest are right. like oh we yeah. need one and like there yeah and then it was like oh wow like you know th- there's a whole they tapped into something that no one's tried before which is like your hero doesn't have to be perfect. Mm-hmm. And in fact, clearly it's better if they're not. And I, so that's why I don't think it's a trend that's going to be like, oh, we're tired of the, the anti-hero because I yeah, think... Yeah, I mean, older stories like that date back like hundreds of years obviously had that same type of story. I'm not saying that that's a recent thing, but I feel mm-hmm. like it's a recent thing in pop- popular culture with TV and movies. And now it's like... Like the movie I watched last night, I was like, this is a perfect example of like someone just assuming that you're going to be on board with, like, the main character just because she's on screen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, that's uh, that's it. There's You know, with, with Walter White, he's killing people and doing crazy, horrible things, but you know the motivation behind it, and you're on board. You're mm-hmm. like, yeah, kill people so, <laughs> so you can feed your family or, like, make money. Like, you want him to do that stuff. It's, like, it's brilliant writing. Right, you're, you're finding yourself, if you don't even, if you're not thinking about it, you catch yourself and be like, why am I rooting for him to get out of this situation? Like he's yeah. so, or, or Joker when you watch Joker and he shoots Robert De Niro's character, mm-hmm. like Quentin Tarantino has a, a clip I watched online that like talks about how genius that scene is. Cause there's no reason for you to be rooting for Joker. Mm-hmm. But you kind of are. Yeah. And you're not rooting for like just the talk show host for some reason. Like he's a, he's just a guy. He didn't do anything wrong, but you, mm-hmm. you're like, when I saw that, I was shocked, but I also like satisfied with him shooting him in the head. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's so weird. And I think the difference is those stories that give you, give, give the time to the origin story to like how, how did, why is this person the way that they are? Why are their motivations what they are so that you start to connect to them? Yeah. Um, and like you said, you're not just taking it for granted that like, Oh, since this is clearly the central character character, then I should be rooting for them. It's not that it's more like, you saw where they came from. You understand why they've become the way they are. Like you saw Joker's life was just everyone treated him terribly for his entire life. <clears throat> yeah. And this, the movie opens with him getting like beat up. Yeah. And he suffers from mental illness and like all these other things. And so you're like starting to like want his life to be better. 
But <laughs> even though you know if you're watching the movie, it doesn't get better. And Walter White, <laughs> you see him, and he's a nice guy, but he has, you know, his life is kind of a mess, and he gets this terminal diagnosis, and you're like, you you start in a place of feeling for him. And so then you kind of put yourselves in, in your, yourself in his shoes, and you're kind of like, well, yeah, I mean, if maybe if I was in his shoes, I would do that too. Like, I could ju- I, maybe I wouldn't do it, but I can justify it or understand why he can justify it. And then you start down this path, and then in bite, bite-sized chunks, you're like, you're, you're, your own morals are, like, completely gone. Because, <laughs> like, yeah. you're now, like, okay with him killing completely innocent people or something like that. You really trick you into giving up everything you believe in <laughs> <laughs> from watching a show. Yeah!